I, I'm talking today about grace, and, and I, I think just like with love, we, we tend to have in the world really watered down what love is, and, and there seems to be a real misunderstanding with grace, not only with people who are outside the church, but I think majorly with the people that are inside the church. One of the reasons that, uh, that we started Life Connection Church was I just had a sense from as a professional counselor, counseling Christians all the time, that they didn't feel much grace in the churches that they were a part of. I mean, this is, this is my behavior grade board, and I, I carry this around with me a lot. Uh, sometimes I put it down, but, but, but it's such a burden when I carry it, and I, I'm, just, I'm just, most of us carry one of these. Some of us don't carry it very often or like to pretend that we don't, but, but we tend to grade ourselves all the time, don't we? I mean, we, we just have this, we, we just kind of always have to know where we stand, how we stand with each other, how we stand with the people we work with. Are we moral? Are we immoral? You know, what, what kind of people are we? And, and is we learn this at a very early age. We learn to earn approval. We learn to earn approval of, the, of our family. We start off earning the approval of our parents. We, we learn how to do that pretty well. And, and, and I don't know, let me, let me just explain this to you a little bit. Purple is the highest grade. So, you know, we all, we all want to get that. And, and red is, you're just, you're just sorry. You're just a sorry human being if you have red. And, and then there's, there's all these places in the middle, and, 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 and none of us really stay here. Well, some do. They're the ones you don't invite to Christmas dinner and things like that. But they, some stay there, and, and then some, most people, the average person, likes to kind of stay neutral right in the middle, right? You know, I'm not too bad. I'm not too good. I can let that slide. You know, that's okay. And, and, but, but no one really wants to be read. And, and none of us really feels like that we can get to the point where, where we earn the purple. And, and, and I want to tell you something. The Christian world is so like that. Not only do we grade ourselves, but we have a tendency to grade ourselves and grade other people and unfortunately, the way we grade other people is so that we feel better about who we are. See, we, we start off in life really wanting to achieve purple. And, and some of us, some of you in this room, you work so hard for purple and it just stresses you out all the time. You just never, ever feel like you can get there. Some of us have just decided, you know, we're just going to kind of stay in the middle. And then, and then some of us, we just kind of give up completely and we drop down to the bottom. We start this early. Matter of fact, my granddaughter, Poppy, she's four years old, and they have a stick like this in their, in their uh, preschool class. And uh, she calls me on her way to school on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and, and, and uh, while mom's driving, Poppy doesn't drive and, and talk on the phone at the same time. And, and so, and, and, and I'll ask her, how are you going to do today? And, and she'll say, well, I'm going to get a blue I'm going to get a blue, and, and you know, she doesn't say I'm going to get a purple anymore. Oh, she earns a purple but, but sometimes, but, but she knows that, that she likes to have too good a time oftentimes in preschool to, to, get, a, to get a purple, so, so blue's okay. And, and the interesting thing is they don't, they don't start off at the bottom in preschool. They, they start off at green, and, and they kind of work their selves back and forth, and, 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 and they earn approval for that, and their teachers, and the sad thing is the one that grades them is their teacher. And, and unfortunately, if their teacher doesn't have a purple day, there's a pretty good chance that none of them are going to have a purple day. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, that's just the way it works. So, so when Poppy's driving home, she'll call, well, when Brooke's driving home, Poppy will call me and say, hey, Daw, and, and I'll say, how did you do? She said, I got a blue. And, and I'm telling you, if she gets a blue or she gets a purple and maybe even sometimes a green, that means it's a yogurt kind of day or an ice cream kind of day. You know, we, we get rewarded. And, and that's how we are. That's, that's how we tend to do that. We, 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 we go for what we think we can go for, and, and we just kind of grade ourselves all the time, and we start that at a very early age. And, and, and sadly, it, it causes stress in our marriages. It causes stress on our job. It, it just causes stress when we're laying in bed at night and it's dark and we're worrying about whether we measure up or not. We need to realize, too, that as human beings, we naturally seek to earn God's approval. 
That's just a natural thing. We, we naturally seek to earn God's approval. And, and all of us, all of us want to do purple. And, and, and most of us will settle for green. And, and, and then, there are, then there are some of us who like to pretend that we're purple or blue or green, but we're really, in our hearts, we, we feel like we're yellow or, or maybe even red. And I don't know about you, but, but carrying the stick around gets heavy. It's heavy, and, it, and it's a burden, and it's a burden for all of us, and it, and it messes us up with, with our relationships with other people, and, and, and we, we naturally, we naturally want to measure our success. And, and sadly, that's what people want to do in church. We, we celebrate the religious people. We, we celebrate the people that show the good front. We, we really celebrate the ones that show the purple and the blue. And, and, and we, we kind of, when they're not around, we talk bad about the people that are yellow or, or red. We're religious. That's who we are. We're religious, and instead of looking at, at our disciplines and our faith as a way to love God and, and honor God, what we, what we tend to do is we use that to grade ourselves. And, and, uh, and, and, and I'm just telling you, that's not grace at all. That's not what grace is at all. And, and the other thing we do is we, we tend to compare ourselves with other people, and, and it feels a whole lot better. It, it's so sad when, when people come to me for counseling, and, and, and they're trying to save their marriage, and their, their Christian couple friend who used to be married also, and, and now they're divorced and not getting along, is trying to talk them into getting divorced instead of saving their marriage. Why? So that they'll feel a whole lot better. Or when that couple who's struggling with their marriage, and, and they go to their church and, and try to get help. And, and I saw this as a counselor all the time. I would have people as, come to me for counseling and they would leave their town. They'd live in Weatherford or Fort Worth or Dallas and, and they would come to my office because it was as far away as they could get from their church so that people wouldn't know that probably at this time in life they would be graded somewhere down around here. It's just, it's just such a sad thing. And our, our response to this burden of not measuring up is pulling away. We naturally pull away from God and we, and we pull away from people. And, and, and Jesus, Jesus addressed this. And, and I don't have this on your notes, but I have it on a slide. And, and you guys are familiar with this. And, and I don't know how you've looked at this passage in the, in the past, this passage of Scripture, or how you feel about it. But, but Jesus said this. Y'all just listen. Just listen. He said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Now, read that, and some of you are thinking Jesus is a spirit, and he's gone, and no, he's not. He is a spirit, but he's not gone. And, and through the Holy Spirit and, and through our relationship with him, and I'll just tell you, at my worst times when, when absolutely nothing makes me feel better, I start talking to Jesus. And even though the pain may not go away, the, the inside pain is, is comforted when I do that. And then look at verse 29. Verse 29 says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble. I'm gentle at heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. Isn't that awesome? Now, as God's love with skin, as Christians, as people who are part of the church, that's how we, who we should be to each other. That's who we should be with the people that we work with. That's, that's who people should go. You know, I know Royal's not the smartest guy on the planet, but I know he's going to comfort me. I know he's going to accept me. I know he's going to love me. I know he's going to care for me. I know he's going to try to help me get back on track. Now, I just want to tell you, you've all lived, and, and we did a survey one time, just a raise hand survey in our church, and we asked how many people had once been churched in their life and then left church because they had had bad experience with things that were going on in their life, and, and they didn't get the support or help or love that they thought they should get it from the people that they went to church with, and a very large majority of the people in the room raised their hand. Well, that's not how it's supposed to work. As a matter of fact, when you go to Jesus, there's no grade level. There's no level at all. And it's really pretty simple. 
before you go to Jesus, there's only red. There's only red, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But when you go to Jesus, we're all on the same playing field. We've all been forgiven. We all have a freedom in our life that's, that's life-changing. And, and some of you today may not be feeling that. You may not even be feeling hope. You may have been a Christian or have been going to church for most of your life, but for right now in your life, for some reason, you're feeling this lack of hope. And, and I'll tell you what it is. You're living, grading yourself according to what others think about you or how well you measure up. Let me tell you how well you measure up. Jesus Christ died for you. He died for you. He died for all of us. It it puts us all on the same playing field. What does the burden of trying or not even trying to reach the purple look like? What does that burden look like as we go? Look at the Old Testament. The prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 64, 6, he says, we are infected and impure with what? Sin. When we display our righteous deeds, and and some of your translations may say seemingly righteous deeds, they are nothing but what? Filthy rags. You know, I ride a motorcycle, and I don't keep it very clean. And when I get with my motorcycle buddies who keep their spotless, they kind of snub their noses at me, you know. But, but, But every once in a while, I'll come in the garage, and I'll get ready to get on it, and it's the windshield's just dirty enough that I got to clean this sucker, you know? I mean, if I'm going to wear a helmet, I might as well clean my windshield, you know what I'm saying? So, so what I'll do is I'll look around, and we have towels laying around, and, and, and every once in a while, I'll pick up a towel that's not clean. And you know what happens when you wipe off a windshield with a towel that's not clean? It just smears it around, and it gets a little bit more dirty, and it actually makes it a little bit harder to clean. And that's what Isaiah is saying here. Isaiah is saying, look, there's absolutely nothing we can do on our own. The things we do that are seemingly righteous, maybe reading our Bible, maybe going to church, maybe helping our neighbor, maybe, maybe feeding the hungry, whatever we do, there are things that we do and, and, and we're measuring it with our own minds what we think is right. But Isaiah says, it's like filthy rags. There's nothing you can do yourself that can clean that. And, and make you righteous. We're born in the red. And Jesus is the only way we can get out of the red. At Life Connection Church, we believe, because the apostle wrote, Paul wrote, that faith comes from the hearing of the word. So at Life Connection Church, we came up with a, an acronym a few years ago, LEAP. So we have a LEAP verse every week, and it's in your bulletin. And, and LEAP stands for listen. When you study and you, and you read the word of God, it's important that you prepare yourself to listen through prayer or, or, or just giving up to God's will and, and, then, and then engaging with it. You look at it. You look at the context of it. You say, you know, what are some things in my life that I can do to live more like this? Or maybe there's something I need to change or, or something I need to do but and then and then what happens is, is you apply it and when you do you produce and what comes from that is that peace we were talking about just a little while ago I was talking about the the hope that comes from being uh, from being connected to God and doing what the things that God wants look at Ephesians 2 8 and 9 Ephesians 2 8 and 9 God saved you by his grace when you believed. Now, isn't that interesting? When you believed. All it takes is a belief. Now, now we're going to talk in a minute about cheap belief but, and maybe not being real belief, but, but all it is is belief. And, and we see that in the way we think and the way we behave and the things we do. And you take, we, we have a problem with taking credit for that. And that's why as Christians, you see people in church bad mouth or look down on each other or gossip about each other when, when, they're, uh, uh, when they're doing the things that, that don't measure up to the higher levels in their mind. And, and because of that, we, we grade them and we have pride about ourselves. He says, you can't even take credit for it. Why? Because it's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things. So none of us can be prideful about it. None of us can be boastful about it. Spiritually, there's only red on the scale. 
there's either a sin or there's righteousness. And the righteousness comes from Jesus. And away from God, that's impossible for you to do. So God's, the next thing on your notes, God's grace is a gift. It's a gift for believing, for believers. Look at Romans 3, 23 and 24. We looked at this verse either last week or the week before. For everyone has sinned and falls short of God's glorious standard. Remember we were talking about that? And I said, what's God's glorious standard? And you said, perfection, right? Righteousness, that's God's standard. But all of us have sinned, so we fall short of God's standard. Verse 24, yet God freely and graciously, freely and gra- I don't know about you, have you noticed that Oftentimes when people give you something, they expect something in return. Some of you, some of you have family members like that. You know, you know what I'm talking about, you know? I did this for you or I did that for you. That's not grace. Let me tell you something. If you ever get upset about the way somebody responds when you do something nice for them, you're not doing it graciously. What you're doing is, is you're expecting something from them. You go, oh no, I just want to thank you. Well, that's the same thing. You're just, you're wanting a pat on the back. You're, you're, you're wanting something. Yet God freely and graciously declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. So I want to talk just a minute about grace being misunderstood. Grace being misunderstood. First of all, there's there's what they call a cheap grace. And you know the scripture talks about believing with your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus is what? Lord. So if you go if you go from not believing to believing or you go from not Jesus not being Lord to Jesus being Lord, what would that mean? Would that mean your life would change? Would that mean the things you... I mean, what if all of a sudden you went from being your own Lord to Jesus being your Lord? Wouldn't your life change, most of us? Right? Would you agree? Even some of us who have been Christians for a long time, sometimes we wake up in the morning and say, God, I'm just going to, I'm going to live better for you today. And it, and it changes. And you can see the, the fruit for that. There, there's a lot of people that accept God's grace as cheap grace. And because of, because of our, our human nature, we don't do good with free. We really don't. We don't do good with free at all. We, we tend to take advantage of things that are free. And we tend to want more things that are free. As a matter of fact, when we get things free, we kind of get to the point humanly, because it's just our nature, selfishly, that we try to do things without working for things even. You know, the Apostle Paul says, we don't, we don't work to, to keep our salvation. We don't work because, so that God will save us. But the fruit that you'll see that will come out of that is, we love God so much that that's what we, we want to do. When, when I used to do counseling, I, I, I worked on a sliding scale and I worked with some churches. And one church came to me one time and said, Royal, we have some people that need marriage counseling and they can't afford it. Would you mind if we paid you a lower rate and, and you saw these people for free? They, in other words, no money, nothing financially came out of their pocket. And I said, sure. And this was just church was, they were letting me use one of their offices one day a week and all that. So, so I said, sure, that'd be great. Well, I want to tell you something. First of all, I, we set a limit, five. They immediately sent me five. And within three weeks, I called that church and said, look, I will not see another person for free. Not one. So what, 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 what? they'd miss their appointments. They don't do the things they say they're going to do in counseling. They, if there's no financial investment, if there's no pain for them at all, then, then, then they have no gratitude for that. And, and that's how we are with our human nature. So, so some people look at the grace of God as cheap grace. And, and, and others look at it as earned grace. And that's what the Apostle Paul talks about. He, he talks about the fact that there's, there's no way you can earn it. It's, it's a gift. So, so because of that, one guy, even the Apostle Paul wrote one time, he said, somebody asked him, look, if, if, if it's all about God's grace, then if we just keep on sinning, doesn't that make God look better? 
and I'm paraphrasing here, but he kind of said, you are so stupid. <laughs> because if God really loves us, then, then we would want to honor him and, and, and do what God wants us to do. And then, and then some people just think we've, we've kind of got partial grace, or some of us have more grace than others. With, with partial grace, I think that's when we really struggle with, with the whole, with the whole um, measuring and grading thing. You know, sometimes we feel really good and when life is doing good and we're doing the things we're supposed to and we're feeling good up here, we really feel good about God's grace. Because you can see that's, that's a misunderstanding of what God's grace is. God's grace is free. And because of, we receive God's grace, we don't have that measuring going on in our life anymore. And then other people believe it's just for special people just for special people. You wouldn't believe the, well, some of you may because you've been, but I've sat in meetings with people that are supposed to be pretty spiritually mature and, 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 and all they do is gossip or talk about somebody who's not behaving like they should or, or, or maybe they're in the middle of marital problems or whatever and you just, they're just not getting it. Matter of fact, uh, there was a problem going on because the Jewish people were God's people before we were. We, we, because, of, because of Jesus, it went out to the Gentiles. Well, the Jewish people, once everybody started becoming Christians besides the Jewish people, oh, they would welcome them in their church, but they started telling them they have to do the Jewish rules. You know, if you're going to, you're going to have to be circumcised. Can you imagine a 35-year-old man getting saved and walking to the church and we told you you had to get circumcised? That would be, that would be not a fun thing, right? Matter of fact, that is terrible gift relations I would think go to the go to guest services get a free gift and circumcision on your way out so but we have decided we're not going to do that and the apostle Paul called these people Judaizers you Judaizers I mean there are things there are things you do for your faith that you do for reasons but you can't demand that everybody because that's not the thing those are the filthy rags that he's talking about. It's the grace of God that saves you and makes you righteous. So I just put on here I, just a few things. If, if we were to live a life of grace, if we were to live a life of grace or live a life according to the law, I, I just gave you some comparisons here. First of all, if you live a life of grace, there's this freedom. This, there's freedom from guilt. You know, I've been a counselor for a long time, and I, one of the things I deal with people with all the time is shame. Shame. Now, they may not show it in public, as a matter of fact, there was a lady one time that I was counseling, and, and I've, told, I've told the church about this before, but, but this lady was, man, at something, something Baptist church, they were, her husband was a deacon, and, and they were young, and they were pretty, and they had money, and they had car, and, and I want to tell you something, everybody in the church thought they were a purple. I mean, there's just, if anybody's a purple, they are, you know, not only because they're good people, but look at her teeth. God has blessed them, you know, God has blessed them so much. They must be good people. And she would come in and I was there at that time on Tuesdays and Thursdays counseling all day long. And this lady was in, was there on Tuesday and, and she would come into my office. And let me tell you something, when a woman with a lot of makeup cries, dude, it is a mess. I mean, it just makes a mess. And I'm going, don't they have waterproof that? No. So she comes in and, and, and she, she would come in and close the door. She would never cry in public, ever, ever, ever. She'd come in and she'd sit and she'd start talking about how terrible her life was and, and how she thought she was way down on the bottom of the scale and, and, and just, you know, wish she could be like so-and-so or wish she could be like so-and-so. And, and, and I'll never forget, I just, I just thought to ask, well, is there somebody in your church you would like to be like? Remember, this lady's the purple lady. Everybody thinks her and her family are up here. And she listed, she told me this other lady, and she said, oh, her husband's so good to her, and her, her kids mind so well, and her husband's got such a great job, and he's home every evening, and listed off all this stuff. And, and because of privacy reasons, I couldn't tell her that lady was the same mess coming in on Thursday that she is coming in on Tuesday, because we have a tendency to compare ourselves with each other. We have freedom from that. We're not trapped. The second thing, a grace life is a life that's forgiven. A life that's forgiven. I want the, there's nothing, when you've received the grace of the gift of God, there's nothing in your life you're not forgiven of anything. There's nothing you can do that, that won't get washed away. 
And then as you live your life as a Christian, you know, when we're trying to look like we're purple, but deep inside and the stuff that's going on at home or in our family or whatever, we're really probably yellow or we're forgiven for those things. And when you're in the middle of sinning, you're, you're in the middle of sinning and you, you put a dissonance between you and God. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like a little kid going in his room and slamming the door and going la, 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 la. You know, you, you distance yourself. You can't hear God, but he's still there. And all it takes is for you to open the door and he's there. And the only reason you're not feeling his comfort is because you're not there. It's not because he's not there. You're the one that's not there. So, so, so we're forgiven. We're, we're not condemned. We, we have assurance. Just like we can't earn our salvation, we can't earn keeping our salvation. I really believe once saved, always saved. That's what the Bible teaches. So if you've come to that point in your life, and, and, and one of the things that kill us, I want to tell you something. Doubt doesn't mean you don't have faith. Doubt doesn't mean you don't have faith. As a matter of fact, if you don't have fear, it doesn't take faith to, if you don't have fear. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's important for us to realize that we can't lose that disconnect from God. That doubt, that fear, that uncertainty, that's living under the law. Then there's the new you and the old you. The, the new you has been changed. When, when we do baptism and, and, uh, and, uh, and we... We say buried in Christ and raised to walk a new life. That's a symbol of the old you going underground and being resurrected to the new you. And, and that makes you a forgiven person who still makes mistakes on a regular basis. And the closer you get to God, the less you'll make of those cho bad choices. So you've got the new you under grace and the old you under the law of life. And unfortunately, you know, when you look back on your life, as a lot of you have, and went, the reason I left this church was because of this hypocrite, or the way they treated my mom, or, or, or what they did to my dad, or, or how they did whatever. You're, 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 you're talking about people who were living under the old you, the law, when grading people was how you made yourself feel better about who you were, because even they, they knew they never, ever measured up. And then when you live a grace life, you live under the life of faith. When you live under the new life, you live a life of, I mean, the old law, the law life, you un live under the law of works. When you live under the grace life, you're led by the Holy Spirit. When you live under the law, under the law life, you live under the rules. It's way different, isn't it? I mean, the Holy Spirit is all about this love that you got, you have for, for God. Can, you know, there, there are things that I do for my wife because I'm a husband and I'm supposed to do that, right? And sometimes that's why I do it. And I don't enjoy it then as much as I do when I do it because I love her. You know, it's different. We can be fighting and, and I'll get mad and, you know, because I'm, I, Lisa thinks I procrastinate, <laughs> and I do, and I do, I do, and I know that nagging will make you do it a little bit faster, not. So, you know, th there are times when I'm in that situation, I'm still going to do the thing, I'm, I'm still going to do, I'm going to go mow the yard, but if I'm mowing the yard and yelling at her on the way out, or, or I'm mowing the yard and running over her favorite flowers, because, no, I'm just kidding, I don't ever do that, I would be killed if I did that, but, but you know, you see the difference? There's a difference. When you love somebody, you love doing the sacrifice. And, and that's living under the grace life and, and not the law life. And then there's the relationship under the grace life and religion under the law life. So that's a difference in the grace life and the law life. And you could go, I, you know, I just figured it was probably time to quit after that. But your religious motivation can also be the wrong reason. Again, if you're, if, you're, if you're following God because you love Him, if you're, if you're accepting God's grace and you're excited about Him, it's completely different than if you're using it to feel better about yourself, you're using it to m move up the ladder. You know, a lot of times people will be going through a point in their life and they just feel like I'm just going to start obeying the rules and doing the things, I'm, but, but it's the wrong reason. Do you know you can live a life like that religiously, even following the things that Jesus says, except for making him the Lord part and, and loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind and all that, and not even be recognized by him? Did you know that? Look at this scripture. 
Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Jesus said, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Making Jesus the love of your life. That's what changes your life. You know, I've always kind of been rebellious. And I hardly ever remember when I lived at home with my parents doing anything that I wasn't made to do. You know, if you want to go swimming, you got to mow the yard. If you want to do this, you got to do that. And, 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 I, and I never did that out of love. That's confession. I did that out of getting something. And now my mom's pretty old and you know, I, when I do things to help her now, it's, it's out of love. And, and, and she knows that. No parent likes it when their child is being obedient but not really being obedient, you know? So, so Jesus said, you know, there are people who are, are doing it, but they're not doing it out of love. They're, they're doing it, but they're not doing it out of grace. They're, they're doing it without accepting their salvation through Christ. Remember in 1 Corinthians 13, we give the love list, love is patient, love is kind. Well, right before that, in the first three verses, he talks about how you can, you can speak in tongues, you can be very faithful, you can sell all your stuff and give it to the poor. But he says, but if it's not in love, it's not the right way. So what's the difference in just religion and Christianity, just religion and following Jesus? It's all about grace. First thing there is this, religion says do. Religion says do in order to win God's behavior. That's what religion is all about. You are God's favor. You are working to earn God's favor. Now, the sad thing is because every other faith on earth is like that, that believes in a God or, or gods, they're, they're seeking out God's favor. The sad thing about that is you never know if you've earned his favor, ever. I mean, how would you like to sit around going, I'll know when I die if I've earned God's favor or not? That's a little bit too late, you know? I mean, you can't do any penance or anything, you know, after that point in time. But religion says do in order to earn God's favor. Religion is all about man seeking the favor of God. So many Christians live their lives this way. And that is such a burden to carry, just like carrying around that stick. It's, it's such a burden and it causes so many problems in our life. Look at uh, the Apostle Paul wrote in Galatians 3.3. 3. He said, how foolish can you be after starting your new lives in the spirit? Why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? And then what's it about being a Christian? Jesus' grace says done. Religion is due Grace is done. Jesus is God saving man. Isn't that awesome? I mean, God created us. And he knows there's sin in our life because of the first sin with Adam and Eve. He knows we can't be perfect. And righteousness is perfection. So what God did is he fixed it. Pre-Jesus, they, pre-Jesus, they went to the temple. There was one guy, the high priest, that could go into the Holy of Holies and, and, and make the sacrifice for all the people. After Jesus came, the Holy of Holies was opened. We all have access to God and the Holy of Holies. Jesus is God saving man. Look at John 3, 16. You've all heard this. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. We close our service with, with a time with God. I,